Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the National Intel Report. I'm your host, John Statmiller. On the sixth day of October 2009, from the studio's Republic Broadcasting Network, it is the special edition Tuesday show featuring Bob Chapman, Robbie Noel, and George Truly. Gentlemen, are you there? Well, you said the wrong word. <laughs> are you? <laughs> <laughs> Which you one? should have said Caballeros. Caballeros. You know, you guys, you know, you can speak all the languages you want. I just try to maintain mastery of the English language, which See? is not easy to do. <laughs> but just pull down your sombrero and listen. See? Hey, guys, um, something's going on in the uh, gold market. Um, there's a lot of talk, and I'm seeing stories to the contrary that it seems to be, uh, well, uh, tilting at windmills, that uh, there aren't a bunch of companies or countries and yeah, companies, same thing. Uh, they're ready to dump the dollar. And uh, gold, I think, Robbie, what was gold at today? What, 1037? Uh, 1041.90. 1041 uh, Which through. month is that? That's cash. That's I got a I got a spot price of ten thirty eight sixty of twenty two twenty. Well, and either well, if, I'm 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 using the Canadian website. Oh, he is okay. Pretty. Silver was up seventy four at sixteen twenty seven, but the outside month, which is December, uh, traded up eighty five cents at seventeen thirty nine, and I'm showing December up twenty four ninety at ten forty two seventy. Well, at any rate, whether it's 37 it's or... It's a breakout. It is, it is, that was, thank you, uh, Mr. Chapman, that was my point. And it's broken the records uh, set, uh, what was it, March of last year, uh, when it went up to, uh, what was it, 1033, 10 yeah, yep. an ounce. So, in your newsletter, Mr. Chapman, I'm looking uh, at your, your, your newsletter, and it says, the biggest key in the gold recently spent two weeks above the $1,000 mark. And we believe gold is prepared for the breakout that will take its price anywhere from 1200 to 1700 an ounce. And there is very good reason to believe that is going to be the case. Uh, the United States can find no partners anymore to buy its debt to finance endless, useless wars. Um, even Iran figured that out uh, when they said, hey, we're, we're going to dump the dollar uh, you can't buy our oil anymore for the United States dollar. We want it done in gold or another currency because uh, they figured out they were financing potentially their own destruction. Well, there's other countries that are figuring that out as well. And uh, th this is th this is going to be very interesting to watch. What you're going to see is the fruition of the prophetic messages that have been coming from Mr. Chapman as to why gold is going to go up. Even the Australian banks are saying, you know what? <laughs> we see inflation heading our way. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to raise the lending rates. So this whole thing is starting to break loose, and it's going to break fast. We've got to take this break, and we'll be back real fast right after this. Get ready for Real Talk Radio. You're listening to the National Intel Report with your host, John Statmiller. Robert Fisk is out there saying that, well, the Gulf states are planning along with China, Russia, Japan, and France, and probably the rest of the civilized world to end the dollar dealings for oil. And he's putting this thing out at uh, 2018. But Max Kaiser, that was just on Russian television, uh, reports a somewhat different picture. Uh, we're going to play this clip, and we'll set the tone for this hour of the National Intel Report. Things are going to start moving quickly, folks. Would there be a run on the dollar because of the growing public debt and budget deficit in the U.S.? Sure. Well, in reference to the Robert Fisk article, I'm hearing the same thing here in my contacts in Paris and in the Mideast. So I'm hearing the same story. Uh, what I'm also hearing is that the basket of currencies that will replace the U.S. dollar will be much more heavily weighted in gold bullion. As much as 50 percent of the new currency scheme will be weighted in gold bullion. And the point of all this, keep in mind, is that these countries, China, Russia, and Iran, the Shanghai Cooperative Organization, 
they've made it really uh, no secret that they hope to take down the U.S. economy and take down the U.S. dollar. And this is a move toward taking down the U.S. dollar and the U.S. economy by shifting the way oil is priced out of the world reserve currency, the dollar, which gives America an incredible free pass to finance wars and occupations around the world. China, Iran, and Russia don't want to finance America's military adventures in Afghanistan and Iraq and possibly Iran by allowing the U.S. to have the world reserve currency, the U.S. dollar, which gives them uh, this uh, what they call uh, coinage, or um, the ability to make a profit on every single transaction that is done around the world because it's all done in U.S. dollars. So this is really another step toward the U.S. economy collapsing and the U.S. as a major global power collapsing. Well, you said that China and Russia are interested in collapsing the U.S. economy, but those countries, plus Japan and the Gulf states, all hold big dollar reserves. So uh, do you think they're interested in really collapsing the U.S. economy? Yes, well, they're fed up. Uh, first of all, that's why you see the gold price moving up right now. It's hitting new all-time historic highs as a way to hedge against the dollar collapse. They're trying to do it in a way that's slower rather than fast. This is a done deal. It's baked into the cake. The U.S. dollar will no longer be the world reserve currency, certainly by 2018. But I have a feeling, based on what I'm hearing and the information that I have just learned in the last two hours, uh, that this time schedule that Robert Fisk is portraying, 2018, things are going to be happening a lot faster. Well, which currencies do you think then could replace the dollar? Well, as has been mentioned, uh, the, the idea of a basket, a currency basket. Uh, they're already talking about this at the G7, the G4, and the G20, and the International Monetary Fund. We just came out of a major uh, G meeting in Pittsburgh, and the topic of discussion was creating a global currency to replace the U.S. dollar as reserve currency. They already are aware of this. They're talking about a special drawing right, which would allow all the currencies to be recalibrated and then uh, redistributed, with the U.S. dollar taking the biggest devaluation of up to 50%. I would imagine going forward, which is about what you would need for the U.S. to come in line with the global economy in terms of the incredible debts that the U.S. is carrying, that Asia is financing, that the Mideast is financing, which is one thing. But what they are objecting to, and what I'm hearing from my contacts here in Paris and in the Mideast, is that they don't want to finance America's wars anymore, because the U.S. dollar reserve currency status gives America an incredible leverage in financing wars that they don't really have to pay for. China, Russia, and Iran are paying for America's wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and possibly in Iran. And there's no strategic or philosophical reason why they're making these wars other than the war industry in America controls the White House. Obama works for the war industry, and they need wars to keep profitable, and that's the only reason we're seeing this. And this is why China, Russia, and Iran, and these other countries are saying, wait a minute, uh, we don't want to watch as this country, America, really with a horrible economy, huge debts, the only way they can extricate themselves out of their debt problem is to go into countries and commit genocide, or as they've done in Iraq, or support rogue states in the Mideast, you know, un, un, uh, uh, undocumented rogue nuclear uh, countries in the Mideast that people object to. So this is what we're seeing. But I think the timetable is going to be a lot sooner than what Robert Fisk is suggesting, 2018. I think we're going to see this, things developing a lot quicker. And what impact could the possible demise of the dollar as the world's reserve currency have on the U.S. economy? And can the U.S. do anything to prevent that happening? Well, the U.S., remember, it's less than 5% of the world's population, and uh, its, its economy is a large part of the global economy, but it's fueled almost entirely by debt. So if the U.S. economy were to disappear overnight, it would, wouldn't be as the catastrophe that some in the U.S. argue it might be. Yeah, sure, there would be dislocations in the near term. But look what happened in the scandal last year in Wall Street in 2008. That was completely fabricated by uh, the folks on Wall Street to give themselves a huge bonus you know, that was a fake, uh, really, collapse that they engineered, and they engineered this uh, rescue from the rest of the world to come bail them out in their bonuses. And the rest of the world is just saying, we're sick of your fake manipulation of a, uh, uh, your fake currency, your manipulation of the markets, your phony wars, and all the rest of it that goes with having the U.S. dollar as a world reserve currency. So the world is giving America a collective... Um, I can't make the gesture here on television, but it involves the use of a single finger and an outreached arm with a bent elbow. <laughs>